Today we're speaking with Rod Sheridan, who is Vice President, Sales and Asset Management at uh, Bombardier Commercial Aircraft. Thank you so much for sitting with me. Thank you. So you. maybe we could, we could start off, obviously the, the, the question everybody wants to know about is the flight test program. How is it going? The flight cal validation is going, going very, very well. We've got three airplanes flying. Uh, number four is uh, we've done power on, and uh, so it's uh, not too far away from getting its permit to fly. Um, there have been, as a matter of fact, yesterday there was a uh, cross-country flight where the airplane flew from Wichita back, number one flew from Wichita back up to uh, Montreal. Uh, and yeah, they, we're, we're pleased with what we see. Um, we're, you know, we don't have any, don't have any reasons for concern. When do you think the airplane's going to move uh, to, from direct control to fly-by-wire? Um, I'd have to check with Rob. I know there is a, I don't know the exact date, um, and you know, it's one of those things where uh, it, it will move and it'll be a decision that the engineers and then ultimately the, you know, the pilots and so, that will make. But I don't know, I can't, don't want to speculate on the exact date. So when, when people um, impugn the, the program right now for still not using FBW, is that, it's, it's going according to plan then? Well, it's, it's, you got to remember, the airplane is, uh, is fly-by-wire all the time, but in the, in the direct mode that it's going is the, is the best for flight test because you can actually do everything with the airplane. I, you know, I know if you're, uh, the way the airplane works is you're flying in like a Boeing, an Airbus logic right. up to a point, you hit the soft stop and then you go into direct mode. And so to get the most out of the flight test program, you kind of the way I look at it, you have to do it in direct mode anyhow. Okay. It seems that the, the flight test program really started slowly. And hopefully it's now accelerating with more airplanes coming on stream. What was the cause of what appears to be a slow start? I, you know, I just think it's one of those, uh, I don't want to, I don't want your best to ask, uh, you know, Rob and the guys of what they would see, but I mean, uh, you, there are elements in the flight test program that you have to be sure, certain of, and we have in this aircraft, uh, we're doing a lot of things that are completely new. So taking the time, making sure that you get it right, making sure that you have a plan that everybody can live with and that you'll get the results that you need. Those are the most important things. Right. And so, I mean, I don't think anybody begrudges anyone taking the extra time to make sure that it happened. Right. You know, and, and you remember, the, I forget how many new syst systems there are on the aircraft, but it is, uh, it is fairly substantial than say A350, which is a, a pretty much proven systems. Right. Uh, so it's uh, we are doing a lot of things that are different here. Right. I th I, um, from our own tracking of, of the, the the programs, yeah. the, the unfortunate thing is that your program is running alongside two other programs. Boeing obviously is a derivative, mm -hmm. and as you point out, the 350 does not have that many new systems all in one place. Right. So it, it looks relatively, shall we say, slow, mm -hmm. as opposed to being slow in an absolute sense, is what you're saying. But it, it's, it was always designed, too, to ramp up you know, to the 5 100s and then the 2 300s. So that's a lot of airplanes that can, that can build up a lot of hours very, very quickly. Right. So, well, flight, flight testing is always back-end loaded, yeah, right? Yeah. So, you, so the question here, I guess, is do, as, as you add more airplanes, do you think you're going to meet your targets? Are you, is, is Bombardier comfortable to meet its, its, its uh, critical dates? The way, what we've said now, uh, it, what we've stated as the, uh, the dates, I mean, yeah, we're quite, we're quite comfortable with them. I mean, and that's based on the plan as it, as it moves forward. So, um, yeah, I don't think there's any reason for concern. Okay, so we understand that there are a few customers in the wings waiting, waiting for the economics numbers. Yes. Um, when can we expect to get proof of this, the, 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 the C-series performance and uh, those numbers? Well, every day that you go through in flight tests, we get a little bit more. But, I mean, as the other airplanes come on, um, this is the first airplane is really expanding the flight envelope. The second airplane will do a lot of the, uh, does most of the, the engine work. And, that, and that's where we can really start to get uh, fuel numbers and that sort of thing, which is what people are looking for. You know, I, I don't, the, at this stage, there is nothing that anybody's really worried about. I mean, 
and the, we're, we're, we're uh, validating everything that we have uh, that we set out as uh, set out as objectives in the program, and we're validating what we learned in the Siasta as well. So uh, again, the program is a little different than other people have done before. It is more a validation of what we have already learned. So I. Yeah, I, I think we're very, very comfortable with where we are. Right. Pratt & Whitney seems to be very comfortable that they are going to be at or better than spec yep. at entering into service. Do you think that that's a fair, yes, fair view? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Because the only thing, of course, any of us know from, from watching the airplane so far is how quiet it is. That's the only thing that, that's public. Well, that's, yeah, because at this stage, I mean, it's kind of early. And you have to remember, we've been fairly conservative in what we want to say. So, uh, you know, the, the only thing that is sort of common knowledge from the people hanging around the airport is the, is the noise. And the noise is... The lack of noise. The lack of noise, completely. Right. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's the only thing that the, you know, the plane spotters and that will be able to validate. And uh, right. you'll probably see on the websites and that, that, yeah, this is unbelievably quiet. How about a, a thought on some of the economics um, in terms of competitors? What do you think is the main competitor? Well, the E2 is a way off. Yep. The current E-Jet is going to be, in, in economics, is going to be eclipsed by the, the C-Series. Absolutely. Um, and the 319 and the, uh, the 319CO and the 737-700 will be eclipsed by the economics. The NEO and the MAX of those two airplanes are going to be slightly different. What, what is the primary, if, if I were an airline considering the C-Series, what else would I be looking at? I think in short term, you're going to see a lot of people comparing it to, you know, current generation 319s and current generation 737-700s, just because they can be had very inexpensively. But, you know, in the used airplane business, you know, economics are not driven by what you see face value on the lease rate. You know, it, the, let's face it, the Ryanairs, the uh, Air Asias, uh, EasyJets, they had a model for a long time which said, fly out the time as much as you can and then dump the airplane. And on a lot of sale leasebacks, the return conditions were very low, and the airplanes that are coming on the market, yeah, the lease rate's cheap, but you have a lot of money to invest to be able to keep it, to keep it going. So and, and you've flown, and the first owner's flown off all that good time on the engines. Engines, the components, you know, and then you have an interior refresh, and you know, and nobody even walks by one of those airplanes without dropping a million dollars on the interior. So, so. The, in, in the, for, for, for in a non-aviation environment, we could sort of say you're buying a second-hand car that's been used by for a taxi. You're buying you're buying something from Avis or Hertz. So it's really been run hard. Yeah, let's face it. The model. That those airplanes that are a lot of them are coming on the market are they've been flown hard to get all the time out of them when they can, uh, and do minimum amount of maintenance. They do like the required amount, sorry, I shouldn't say minimum. They would do the required amount of maintenance. But the idea is is to and again, Ryanair, EasyJet, a lot of people have said this in the past, is that they want to extract all the value they can out of that out of the aircraft and then uh, put it back. So then how does Bombardier f facing that kind of a situation market? How do you sell the C-Series into that kind of a environment? Because the C-Series is set up, it's a longer term decision. You're never going to compete to somebody who wants to make a five year decision. And that's the guy who's going to go after the 319 or the 737-700. With somebody looking at the C-Series and the value proposition of the C-Series is looking at it on a 15, 18 year time frame and what are the benefits it's going to bring through that time. Automatically, when you look at the first five years of the C-Series, because it's a new aircraft, okay, you have all the warranties, you have the you know, maintenance holiday, all that, you're automatically going to be cheap, so much cheaper than what you'll be on a, on a 737 or a current 737 or a 319. You, uh, you're going to avoid the maintenance and the entry into service cost. You're going to avoid the immediate overhauls. The overhaul on these airplanes is pushed out so far that you on a on one of the three nineteens if you bought it from you know one of the low cost carriers you may end up doing uh, a huge piece of the life limited components in the engine before you'd ever open the engine on a C series. Well, we we saw Allegiant do that with some some of the three nineteens they were going to buy and then they pushed them away. Yeah, they short term decision though. 
but it's a very short-term decision that they could. And Allegiant, they're the masters of that. Look at what they did with all the, uh, the, the MD-80s. You know, and they, they had an airplane where it was cheap. They parked it three days a week. And uh, they parked it three days a week. And, uh, you know, they didn't have to get the utilization. You know, so they've made a very they've made a decision because of availability. It's driven on aircraft, but that will change, and they're going to have to be very very selective uh, about which airplanes they pick up. When you look at this environment, how much I don't know if you you obviously can't give me details, but how aggressively does one have to discount this new airplane in the market given this kind of environment? Is a lot of pressure? But yeah, there's a lot of pressure because of the, of the way the market is. And uh, you know the, the the pressure that uh, more specifically Airbus uh, seems to be exerting, um, and so yeah, we're going to be have to be very aggressive. But you know the comment you made earlier about people looking waiting to look at what happens on flight test, and yeah, as we get further down the flight test program, and we can you know our margins of, uh, of margins for. Uh, uh, you know, economics and that sort of thing become more well known. That gives us a little bit more room to maneuver, and right. we don't have to. Uh, we don't have to uh, hedge the price. We don't have to do some things like that. And we can prove to people that no, this is what it will achieve. And so, yeah, there are a lot of people that have said they don't want to buy the airplane until they see it fly and, and uh, see it in operation. And those are the people that in the next year you'll see us come to them with real data. And that we have a we have an airplane that's up and flying, when the other guys are still still sitting back, they haven't got a flying. Yet. Which leads me to my neck, my my final and last question. Okay. Um, we're coming up for Farnborough. Yep. These air shows, despite all the OEMs saying they never bank any orders and they never do this and they never do that, but there's nothing like a big media splash at a big air show. Absolutely. So. Without giving away any secrets, what should we be expecting this year from Bombardier at Farnborough? Again, we are, you know, we're not going to, it's, it's kind of interesting, like do you, you can't hold an order, like once we've done something we have to disclose it, same as 90% of our customers, they have to disclose once we've done something. But I'm superstitious too, in that I believe that a bird in the hand is better, and you get something, when you have something done, do it immediately. Don't try and wait. Right. You know, it's one thing if you're signing up some uh, LOIs, which you which you don't in a lot of cases you don't necessarily have to announce. Those you can bank; it's it's not a big deal. And quite frankly, when you see what a lot of what comes out of Farnborough and the air shows in Paris, you know, it is a lot of LOIs and MOUs and you know, you know, a few proposals and that sort of thing. I mean, how many f big contracts are actually done there? Right. So. Again, it's a little bit of theater, more on behalf of uh, Boeing and Airbus, and I think more driven by Airbus than anybody. But uh, I, you know, it's not something that uh, we want to play in. Uh, we want to. We would love to have some announcements there, but I mean, if we get the deals done ahead of time, you know, I think we get them done and we sign them. Uh, at least you're going to find with this year with, with a lot more numbers than you did before from all oh, yeah. the flying. Completely different. So that's going to change the environment right there. Yes, absolutely. All your conversations are going to be a little different. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you.